How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now today I want to look at the other side of the equation and that is energy consumption, specifically on a heat pump setup I have from Mr. Cool that I installed last summer. Now this is obviously winter time and it's very cold conditions. The last two weeks have given us a good range averaging from 34 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to an average of negative five degrees Fahrenheit where we've been able to exercise the system and now see how much energy does it actually pull to heat this thousand square foot home behind me and is it practical for your application? Now I've been impressed with this system. It's worked pretty much flawlessly and kind of beyond my expectations, but I did just take a look at the numbers behind the energy consumption and I also was very surprised on how much it's actually pulling. So let's jump inside, take a look at the inside air handler unit and then look at the numbers so you can apply that to your own applications around your house or your project. To give you a little bit better idea, here's the indoor unit of the Mr. Cool Universal Hyperheat System. This is 36,000 BTU or three ton. It's basically a direct replacement for a central air unit. Usually you'd have a gas furnace. Specifically in my case, I had an oil burning furnace, ripped that out of here, ripped the tank out, and then reconfigured cold air intake coming in to a filter box here, also a stand for the unit. The air comes up through and then out through the ductwork to the registers of the home. One thing to call out is this unit can have additional heating kits or a heat kit up top, which varies between five kilowatt heating kit up to 20 kilowatts. That's basically like a large industrial hair dryer or heat gun. So when the heat pump becomes ineffective because the outside temp's so low that it can't effectively create heat in your home, then it can kick on your supplemental heat through the heat kit, turn on those coils, and then pass air past the coils to create heat. So it's just an alternative heating source. Might be a good option for you depending on how low temperatures get in your area, but specifically for this test, the energy consumption is just from the heat pump itself. There is no additional supplemental heat, no additional coils in the unit. So if you already have a heat pump in your home, don't forget you can just look at your monthly power bill to get a better understanding of your monthly consumption. And specifically, most of us have smart meters nowadays, which will give you a daily breakdown if you log into your website of your utility company and you'll really see day by day what you're consuming. And then if you're looking to offset that monthly power bill with solar panels installed in your home, that monthly power bill is really all you need. And there's a link in the description. That's where I started off. You can enter in how much you actually pay per month, a few details on where you'd want those panels installed. And then that's all the information they'll need to give you an estimate on the size of system and then also the cost of the system after the 30% tax credit, just an estimate there. If you want to go further, then they can connect you up with local installers and those installers can give you actual quotes so you can get down to the dollars and cents of what would take to offset your monthly power bill, which is something I did last year. And overall, it's working out really well. And I'll do an update video here later in 2024. So let's look at this spreadsheet here and we'll run through it to give you kind of the bearings of what we're looking at. Now remember, we ran for about two weeks, 15 days, and from January 1st to January 15th, we really got a good range of temperatures to test this Mr. Cool 36,000 BTU system. And here's a few house specs so you can relate to that. This is a thousand square foot home. The windows are new, double pane, they're vinyl replacements. Wall insulation is R13 and roof insulation is only an R18. So this isn't an overly efficient living space, but it is a small living space. I have a little bit more details on what it takes to run this unit. So there's a 240 15 amp circuit going to the air handler and a 240 50 amp circuit going to the actual condenser, that outdoor unit. And then for the maximum power draw, so what would you actually need to deliver if you're setting up, let's say, your own off-grid system, the maximum power draw that I saw measured from my EcoFlow uh, Smart Panel 2. So the power is going through this Smart Panel from EcoFlow where I can monitor everything. I can power it from a generator. I can power it from the grid. I can power it from the Delta Pro Ultra unit, the batteries that I have set up that bring in solar power. Kind of a neat little unit. The maximum I saw was seven kilowatts and that was predominantly all going to the condenser outside. The condenser is the biggest consumer of that power overall. Now let's look at the numbers. 
So you can go and dig into both Fahrenheit and Celsius numbers, and then I give you the total overall subpanel total, and then I break it out how much did the Mr. Cool unit use, and then it broke between the condenser and the air handler. Now again, the condenser is running about 92% to 96% of that total load, and the air handler really only doing the blower fan, and then also the circuit board and kind of the brains of the operation. Overall, here we got on our secondary axis here, we have average daily temperature. So that's gonna be your blue line. We can see 33 degrees here, then we dip down to 30 degrees, then we go back up to 32. So we're kind of in that 30 to 35 degrees for most of the days, but then you can see the drastic dip in temperature. 11 degrees Fahrenheit is average high, negative five degrees Fahrenheit, and then back, bouncing back up to zero. So it's been kind of brutally cold for Illinois where I'm at. And then you can see the overall daily energy consumption. When we're in that 30 degree Fahrenheit range, overall this unit runs at about 35, 37, a little bit higher up to uh, probably, yeah, about 37 to 38 kilowatt hours per day. That's how much energy it's gonna consume per day. But, and this is a big but, when you drop this unit was able to effectively heat the space. So even down to the lowest temp I saw was negative nine degrees Fahrenheit, and that was that average day of negative five degrees Fahrenheit. But this unit, this unit alone consumed 114.4 kilowatt hours of energy, which is a massive overall energy consume, consumer from an appliance standpoint. And it kind of, eliminates this as any feasible solution to deliver heat to a living space if you're living off grid. That's just a massive consumer that would just make it completely impractical, at least for any of the systems that I'm thinking about. But you probably could make an argument in that 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, now you have a unit that delivers effective cooling for your home. So we'll do another test in the summer and really break down the cooling. But then if you're in 40s, maybe in the 30 degrees Fahrenheit as average high, maybe this is a load that you could offset if you were trying to put together your system and live off grid. Still, 30 to 40 kilowatt hours is a massive demand on your system, but obviously that's much more practical than these deep freeze days where the energy goes kind of off the charts. In that case, you would want supplemental heat. So whether you have a pellet stove, maybe you have some kind of fireplace, maybe you have something that is using gas, propane, which could offset the heating demand on these really demanding days, because overall this system that we're using, this Mr. Cool system, and pretty much any heat pump that I've seen is not gonna be very effective in terms of the energy consumption. So let me know what you think down in the comments and, and just another data point. So this is a thousand square foot home and this is the only heat source, right? So on that very brutal day, we got up to as high as 114 kilowatt hours of consumption. Now my other home is 3,500 square foot and it's a gas furnace, a little more practical solution for Illinois winters. And all winter long, we pretty much average between 20 to 30 kilowatt hours of total consumption for the entire home. And that's including using our electric stove and using our electric dryer and all the other consumption and running the air handler, which you're pretty much just running the blower at that point, and then the burners are delivering the heat. So just another data point, a much, much, much larger home with a gas furnace, 20 to 30 kilowatt hours. If you go heat pump, even with a smaller home like this of a thousand square foot, man, it can really go off the charts once that low temp really starts setting in below freezing and getting to like kind of the zero degrees Fahrenheit mark. Now, if you guys wanna know more information on this actual installation, Check out this video right here. It's actually how much I saved installing this unit myself over on Everyday Home Repairs. This is the complete installation. And then over here is actually a breakdown where I dove in, can this unit actually heat the home? And we dove in a little bit more, is it functionally able to go into these low ambient conditions and still meet a 71 degrees Fahrenheit thermostat setting? So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.